Hey guys, so this is a follow-up video to the Has Black Desert Gone F Too Far Along in pay to win on the North American European servers. So the biggest criticism everyone seems to have about the video is that pay to convenience is what most of the things in Black Desert Pearl Shop are. The majority of stuff are simply ways to make what you're doing more efficient, or you do them more quickly or without having to use so many steps, such as the processing, out processing outfit, which just lets you save time and not have to check processing as much, pets, which lets you not have to wear out your R key after a week or so of grinding, and other things in the same vein. The problem is that what people don't seem to realize is that paid for convenience is pay to win in Black Desert. So I expect this to be a very controversial complaint. Lots of people are going to stop watching the video right here and start complaining about how I'm wrong, pay to convenience is not pay to win, they're separate terms. But everyone seems to latch on to pay to convenience as a way to say a game's not pay to win, because in a lot of games it isn't. If I'm playing a mobile game such as King's Raid, or if I'm playing World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2, or if I'm playing, I don't know, normal RuneScape, not old school, stuff like that, even old school RuneScape, Pay to convenience is me buying stuff such as the subscription items in World of Warcraft and Old School RuneScape, or items that I can sell for gold in Guild Wars 2, and using that to fund my character. And that's the same thing that's happening in Black Desert. You can buy costumes to sell in the marketplace, you can buy value packs to earn more silver, you can buy pets so that you can get more silver while you're grinding. And everyone goes, okay, it's not pay to win in those games, why is it pay to win in Black Desert? Well, in those games, there is a clearly definable cap. You have, Black Desert has a final cap as well, which is full pen gear, but there's like one person in the world in Black Desert that has that cap, and everyone else is at the soft cap, which is full tet with full try accessories. And some people are even, a lot of people are even below that, that's only really the end game players that are at full tet with full try accessories. Most players have a mix of duo try, maybe a single or one or two tets, with duo or try accessories. In World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, in World of Warcraft, a lot of people like to say, oh, you can buy level 110s or level 100s. I'm not really sure. I haven't played in a few months. And in Black Desert, if you could buy a level 59 or 60, that'd pretty much be the same thing because it's just saving you time grinding. But if you could buy, you can't, at World of Warcraft, 110 is the maximum level cap. And in Black Desert, there is no maximum level cap. If I could buy a level 65 in Black Desert, that would be pay to win. Buying a level 60 is just pay to convenience because... You're, kind, you're just saving the time that you would have spent. You don't get any of the money for grinding. You're literally just getting 60 and then starting the game from there. And that's not too much of a problem. I have no problem, honestly, if they would implement something like that in Black Desert. I have no problem with the Book of Combat because combat experience is kind of useless after a certain point. Once you get to about level 60, 61, you don't really need more combat experience unless you're a super hardcore grinder that wants to go for 62. And even then, 62 is pretty much the cap right now. I'm not even sure if there's a single 63 in the world. It's such a difficult thing to get to, it takes thousands of hours that it might as well be impossible for most normal players or even most hardcore players. But gear is really where pay to convenience is pay to win in Black Desert. You cannot buy gear directly in Black Desert. You can't just go to the cash shop and buy yourself a Tet Dandelion or a Pen Zarka. You have to get it, go out there, enhance the gear yourself, or buy it off the marketplace. But because you can do this, you can pay to convenience, which is getting you more silver in less time, is essentially paying to win because you're paying for the better gear than other players. In World of Warcraft, you cannot buy better gear than other players, and you cannot buy gear at all off the cash shop. You can only really buy subscription items so that you can sell for gold in-game, and then you can use that gold to buy the best gear in-game, but the best gear in-game can be obtained by anyone. If I play World of Warcraft for two or three weeks right now, I could probably have myself in pretty much full whatever eye level the highest gear is. If I play Guild Wars 2 for a week or two, I could have myself at full exotics starting on my Ascended gear and my Legendary gear, which would only give me a 5 or 10% total boost in combat power and would make PvP a little easier, but still fairly similar. Old School RuneScape, sure I could splurge a bunch of money, spend it all on bonds, and get myself a couple of various good items. Wouldn't be able to get any Third Age stuff, but I could get, for the most part, I could get the dragon items I need, I could get... Uh, various special bows, I can get enough runes to cast the good spells. Um, been a while since I played Old School RuneScape, couldn't tell you too much about everything exactly you could buy. But, 
everything is reasonably priced that you can expect to get after a certain amount of time. In Black Desert, because of the price of high-level gear, because of the amount of stuff you can get, getting more silver really is just paying to win in Black Desert because most players do not get anywhere close to the gear cap in this game. Basically, the way gear works in Black Desert means that pay to convenience is pay to win. The lack of a loot treadmill means all progress is permanent. RNG does affect this, but any silver gained is still another attempt made. If you have an average level of RNG, or if you take two players with average levels of RNG, over the course of three weapons, four pieces of armor, and six accessories, their luck should most likely average out, and the one with more silver, especially if one has made two or even three times the amount of silver as the other player, will be the one with better gear, and they will win the fight, because gear in Black Desert equals power, and it's not even a small amount of power like in Guild Wars 2, where someone with full legendary, or full accessories, or ascended rather, will uh, have a, de a slightly better chance against someone with full exotic. It's straight out, if I have full Ted and you have full try, I am going to win, you are going to lose, unless you're playing Mystic and I'm playing like a wizard or something with bad 1v1 skills, I don't know. So you're going to be way ahead of someone else if you are earning more silver. And the things that you can be get for convenience items in Black Desert vastly outstrip a lot of the pay for convenience items in other games. Book of Combat, like I've already said, I don't really have a problem with that because 50% more combat experience isn't actually that much. The Olivia server alone gives you 100%, weekends give you 100%, nighttime gives you 50%. There's plenty of ways to get combat experience. But there's not plenty of ways to get extra energy gain, set from the Common Self Blessing, to get extra drop rate from Common Self Blessing. Uh, pets are a huge one. I am not going to kill Saucens and then spend two minutes picking up all the loot that they dropped. Uh, I'm just going to have myself five tier one pets, or even better, five tier three or tier four pets, pick up a ton of loot in a very short amount of time and bring it back to me. I'm not going to spend ages traveling back and forth between my wagon. So someone mentioned that people don't bring wagons. Yes, people bring wagons. A wagon, yeah, you know, you post it on the main road about 30 seconds away from your grind spot. But that 30 seconds is still a one minute round trip. You've got to get over to the wagon. You've got to unload the wagon. Uh, unload your stuff onto the wagon, maybe you have to manage the extra weight if you've overloaded the wagon, which means you've got to do the stacking trick. Uh, it's just an overall pain in the ass that you're going to do several times because you can't unload everything onto the wagon. Silver will have to remain in your inventory unless you have maids. You are going to have certain items that will have to remain in your inventory, such as armor pieces once you've filled up the wagon with stackable items and other big pieces of armor, such as grunnel plate chests you've got a ton of stuff that will fill up these wagons. So weight is obviously a huge one right there. Inventory is another big one. There are so many convenience items that really make the amount of silver you earn from an activity much higher if you have the item. Processing does not double your... The processing outfit does not double your silver gained per... pretty much per attempt you do. However, what it does is it doubles the amount of silver you can make in a single AFK session by doubling the amount of time the AFK session can last. Now, sure, you could say, oh, well, if you just check on it every three or four hours instead of every six or eight, then you'll be fine. But usually, if you're getting the processing outfit, and you're, if you're processing AFK at all, it's because you're processing AFK while you're at work, while you're at school, while you're asleep at night. And these are times that a lot of people do not have time to check Black Desert. Not everyone can use a program to remote into their computer to check, and honestly these remote programs are so annoying to use at times that sometimes I feel better off just not using them. Not everyone can check all the time, not everyone wants to set alarms at night when they're sleeping, so just spending money on the processing outfit will double that time. Fishing, if you can spend money on inventory, that will well, every extra inventory spot is an extra fish you, you can fish up. Same with weight for processing, just like the outfit. The outfit literally doubles what you can process, but weight can triple that, because if you triple your weight, you triple the amount you can put into your inventory at one time. There are so many items in Black Desert pay for convenience, where they double or triple or just give you a lot more silver gained for doing the same activity as a non-paying player. And in Norse games, this is acceptable because there is a cap. If I, there's no real need for me to earn an extra billion gold if 
after the first 200 million, I've capped out on gear in some fictional game. If 200 million is all I need to get the best gear in the game and get all the best stuff and have all the consumables I'll ever need, then that extra 800 million is now totally useless. However, in Black Desert, if I get a billion silver, I'm going to spend that on a single tet. Maybe not even. Maybe the tet's more expensive than that. And then I need to earn another billion silver for my next tet. And this goes on and on. And tet's not even the best. You can go to pen after that. So if I'm, and most players aren't going to earn that much money over the course of the Black Desert career. If you earn 10 million silver per hour while grinding, and then you earn another 20 million silver per hour, or not per hour, sorry, per day, to totally AFK, and you grind for two hours a day, which is already quite a lot. Two hours a day is a lot for most people to play video games. The average gamer will probably play two hours a day, but they might not play the same game all day. A lot of gamers like to switch up between games. Maybe they jump on Overwatch when their friends are on. Maybe they jump in League of Legends, Fortnite, whatever other games are out right now that they're playing. Maybe they've got some new single-player game. So they're not spending those two hours a night grinding every night, but we'll say two hours a night of grinding, so 20 million, plus another 20 million AFK, so 40 million a day. And if they keep this up for six months, so 180 days... Uh, let's go to 200 days because that's a lot easier to calculate. Let's say they went for 200 days straight like this, so six and a half months. 200 days times 40 million is 8 billion silver, which sounds like a lot of silver because that is a lot of silver. Uh, 8 billion silver is... that's a lot of silver. But... 8 billion silver is only going to get you so many items, right? If you use pre-orders, yes, 8 billion silver will get you full tet. And you will have, you won't have the accessories, of course, but you'll have your tet dandy, your tet zerka, your tet offhand. You'll have your full tet boss gear armor. Assuming, of course, you could pay market price for these and not have to pay stupidly high pre-orders or maybe get unlucky in enhancing, or even just average luck in enhancing, because those will cost you more money. But you'll have your full tet, and you'll have a bunch of good accessories by now. You'll have moved on from Oculus at least. You'll be using stuff like tri or even maybe some duo crescents or tri-crescents if you're really lucky with getting items. And you'll, you'll be pretty good for gear. You'll be around soft cap. But soft cap is not the limit here, and honestly, 8 billion silver is way more than most Black Desert players will make. Most players probably only make about 3 to 4 billion silver, I'd imagine, based on the average gear of players that I encounter. And since most players don't even have tets, it's probably even lower than that. But in the end, paying for convenience in Black Desert is pretty much pay to win because you are getting better gear than a person that has not paid. Yes, they can earn that gear if they keep playing, but there's no reasonable expectation that they will keep playing long enough to earn max gear in the game. And even if they do, they're still going to be feel that they need to spend money on certain items. Processing, for example, is not even cost-effective if you don't have a value pack running, unless you're only using stuff from your Worker Empire, and even then, you're not making that much extra money from the Worker Empire stuff based on if you just sold the items. It's probably better just to fish. Fishing's not amazing AFK money either if you don't have extra inventory slots for it because you're going to cap out in about three or four hours, maybe four or five. There really is, in Black Desert, a misconception that it's not pay to win because everything's pay to convenience. But at what point do we let the developers keep removing features from the game that we should be able to expect in a reasonable MMO in 2018 and sell it back to us as a convenience feature in the Pearl Shop. Auto loot has existed in games for like 10 years now. World of Warcraft has auto loot, Guild Wars 2 has auto loot, and it's not difficult. A lot of players seem to think auto loot would involve, that if auto looting was removed, they removed pets, we would just have to manually go and pick up every item. But all, all they'd have to do is add AoE loot, which is just you pick up one item and it picks up every item in like a 30 meter radius. And that would mean you just kill that giant saucen pack, press R twice, once to open, once to grab, and move on. You wouldn't even need to wait, waste time waiting for your pets, who actually do take a bit longer than this, because they have timers every two and a half seconds for a tier 4 pet, is how often they pick up an item. It goes down to 2.25 if you set them to agile. And auto loot is just one example. They're also double dipping for weight and inventory. In, in a MMO, a non-mobile game, not only do they have inventory spaces with weight limit added, like Skyrim, you've got weight limit. 
whatever this essay, Skyrim is without weight limit, no inventory limits. Path of Exile, Guild Wars 2, World of Warcraft, they have, or RuneScape, they have inventory limits, no weight limits. You, it's one or the other. You really should not be allowed to double dip in this and charge your players for both of them. If they're going to have weight limits, then there should be no limit on inventory, or at least a huge inventory to begin with, like 150, 200 slots. If they're going to have inventory limits, there shouldn't be no weight limit whatsoever. You should just be allowed to stack as much as you can in some magical bags of holding. Like, they're trying to use realism as an excuse for a lot of this stuff, but I don't really see the realism in me spending 50 bucks to triple my weight limit when my character really didn't get any stronger. I don't really see the realism in a game where my wizard can spit out magical lightning, frost, and fire, and all of a sudden has problems figuring out how to carry an extra fish or two in his, in his bag. Like, seriously? Realism? Yeah, I don't get it. But, realistically, pay to convenience, pay for convenience in Black Desert is pay to win. There is no reasonable cap for us to stop at. There is no reasonable expectation that a free-to-play player can catch up. Because really that's what pay to convenience is. Pay to convenience is there's a reasonable cap at the top that you pay to reach faster than other players. But other players still that don't pay still have the expectation they will reach that cap eventually. That's what pay for convenience is. You're paying for the convenience of skipping the grind. In Black Desert, you're paying for the convenience of not having to go jump through the hoops that they have placed there to encourage you to pay for the convenience. You are paying for the convenience of not jumping through these manufactured hoops and getting to take the normal footpath that was there before they installed the hoops. That is what the convenience is in Black Desert. But realistically, there needs to be a manageable place at the top that everyone can reach in a certain, in a realistic amount of time. Sure, you can say, oh, if you don't have pets and you don't have weight and you don't have inventory and you don't have a value pack and you don't have Commissile Blessing and you don't have this and that from the cash shop, that you are gimping yourself, but if you could say, yeah, if you don't have any of that, it's going to take you four months to reach endgame instead of two months if you play four hours a night, then that would be much more acceptable. However, instead what it is, is we're saying, oh yeah, if you don't have any of that, you're gimping your silver generation, you're probably going to make like six or seven million an hour, maybe even less, maybe more like five million an hour, and your AFK silver is going to dip to like a third of what it was, you'll make like three or four million a day, plus whatever your worker empire brings in. And your worker empire is going to be gimped as well because you haven't paid for extra lodgings or extra storage. And you've got to use all your contribution points in the various cities. And you're going to gain those more slowly as well because you can only quest for them. But you're weaker, so you could also cook for them, but you don't have the weight limit to properly cook all night unless you're only cooking essence of liquor. And then you can't really sell these essence of liquor, so you're losing money doing this, and you're losing quite a bit of money because you don't have a value pack to sell them for a decent price, and no one buys them anyways. So you need to convert them to honey wine, but then you need to use imperial trading, and that takes months and months to sell all the honey wine because there's such a limited amount of spots per day. And really, it's just a huge gimp. Like, each excuse goes on and on, and we make excuses for it because we love the game, and we have paid money to play the game, without having to jump through a lot of these hoops, but they keep adding more hoops. They keep adding new additions to the footpath to make it easier and more manageable walk around. They keep brushing off stones and stuff in the way, while the other people are still jumping through more hoops, and even more hoops are being added. Some of them are being lit on fire, and we're being told, oh, it's fine, you don't have to go through the fire hoops if you just pay 30 bucks. You'd pay 40 bucks for a reasonable game, right? You pay 10 to get the game. You'd pay 40 bucks for a good game, right? This is 40 bucks. But then you're paying another 30 here, another 40 here, another 20 here, another 15 a month for, for the value pack here, there, and there. And really, it just gets to be too much. And that, that's really the theme of this. Everyone knows that pay to win kills games. Just look at Archie Age, Arc Age, however you say it, to see what happens when devs get too greedy. For that, you can search up Thunderstruck Trees. And BDO is still a great game, but the path that Kakao is taking with it on the North American and European servers is becoming increasingly clear and players, we would like to say it's the wrong path. The analogy I used yesterday with one of my guildies is we really have two options at this point. We can lay down and accept it, which has 0% chance of changing anything because they'll just say, okay, players are happy, keep going. Or we can make our voices known and try to change it, which has like a 1% chance of succeeding, but at least we're trying to do something. 
And hey, that 1% chance of su succeeding is at least better than your chances of getting a pen item. So, I mean, we've got that going for us, right? But really, uh, condense this video into like a quick TLDR, TLDW, I guess. Pay to convenience in most games is there is a cap. You have gear and items that you cannot really go above in any meaningful amount of power that players pay for the convenience of not having to grind all the way to that cap. They pay for the convenience of getting that cap much faster. Pay to win is when you can circumvent the cap and become much stronger than other players just by paying. Pay to convenience is not pay to win because normal players that don't pay have the reasonable expectation that even if they don't pay, they will be able to reach that cap eventually, and eventually is within a, a reasonable amount of time, within a couple of months, like two or three months of not super hardcore playing, but with just normal playing, that they can reach the cap as well. They might not be as strong as someone that's paid, been paying for convenience and that's also been playing normally at the same time, but they will be almost as strong and can at least compete with them. In Black Desert, paying, to conven paying for convenience is not the same because there is no real way to reach the cap. The cap is full pen, and full pen is pretty much impossible to reach. So the soft cap, which most players try to reach, is full tet with try accessories, but because that is so difficult to reach, most players don't have that either. Now, if you pay for convenience in Black Desert, you are not really circumventing the grind, you're just making the grind easier. You are adding more silver to your coffers by doing the same activity than someone that is not paid for, the con for that convenience of being able to get more silver from the same activity. And because of how the enhancement system works and because the cap is so amazingly difficult to get to, by paying to get more silver, and not just a little more silver, we're talking literally double or even triple in some activities, you are essentially going to become much more powerful than other players that are not paying. So pay to convenience in Black Desert really is pay to win. Now a lot of players, so I'm just going to close out this video with this. A lot of people and players are going to say in the comments below, that's bullshit, pay for convenience is pay for convenience, it's not pay to win, Black Desert's not pay to win, I've played for a year and a half, and I'm at full tet with try accessories, you hate the game, why don't you just quit? That's not true. I love the game, I don't want to quit because I love the game, and it's a really fun game, and I really enjoy my guild, and I'm really trying to get back into it and play more often now, now that I've got a few less obligations. And if you've played for a year and a half and have full tet and full try accessories, good for you. I'm very happy for you. You must have either been very lucky or have worked very hard for that. But if you're telling me you're at full tet with full try accessories and you haven't bought pets or weight or value packs or maids or anything, I would really be interested in knowing just how much you had to grind to get all of that, as I'm sure the number is staggering. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. I know this is kind of a sore topic for a lot of people, but I really kind of want to get my thoughts out on this. Um, I really do hope the cacao kind of tries to court, uh, course correct soon. I don't have much hope for that happening, but as long as the game is still running and still extremely fun to play, and as long as my guild is still playing, I'm probably going to keep playing Black Desert and making guides, so don't worry about me quitting anytime soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> I'd say subscribe if you like it, but... <laughs> from the last video. A lot of people really hate it, so just have a good one, guys.